the Matsumoto Gun Corps have not been able to shoot this year, so we've put together a compilation of last year's April and October demonstrations at Matsumoto Castle. The first thing that the gunners will do, preferably before joining the battle, is light their match cords. As there were no matches or lighters during the Warring States era, the soldiers would use a fire lighting set known as a Hyuchigane. This was similar to the flint and steel that western gunners might have used. The slow burning match cord would then have to last the duration of the engagement, so it was in the soldiers' best interest to keep it dry and out of the elements. Next, the Taicho, or unit commander, will move his people into position. A unit of gunners can be very effective if managed properly. With access to ammunition and replacement weapons, a constant stream of fire can be difficult to overcome. However, in order to make the most of the unit, their vulnerabilities need to be addressed. When locating a position on the field of battle, the Tebotai would need supporting troops to guard against flanking maneuvers. Of course, when defending a castle or pre-prepared position, it's a lot easier to guard against offensive tactics. The gun captain normally opens the display with a shot from his Tanzutsu, which is a matchlock pistol. Don't let the size fool you though, it is a rifle calibre pistol and extremely powerful. The samurai gunners may have carried a pistol for self-defence or for vanity purposes, but given the short range and long loading time they weren't a great tactical option. It has been noted that anecdotally these pistols were sometimes used for duelling as well. As they leave the battlefield, a unit of infantry, or Ashigaru, take their place under the command of the Tebotai captain. You can see that these gunners are carrying quite a lot of equipment. Depending on the wealth of their lord, an infantry soldier could expect great variations in the availability of weapons and of equipment. Fortunately, these soldiers are reasonably well equipped with firearms, swords and armour. The loading process for a Tanagashima, which is another name for these matchlock firearms, can take quite a long time, between 20 and 30 seconds depending on the skill of the soldier and the battlefield conditions. First, gunpowder is put into the barrel and compressed with a karuka, which is the Japanese word for ramrod. If there was live ammunition at this demonstration, that would also be put in, but next, some finer powder is put on the side of the weapon, on the flash pan, that comprises the firing mechanism. Touching the lit match cord to this flash pan causes a chain reaction which ignites the gunpowder and causes the weapon to shoot. <laughs> The lit match cord is then put into the firing mechanism. At this point the guns might fire prematurely, so the weapon is put in the aim and fired as soon as practicable. A long firing line like this might be useful in delivering a heavy weight of fire as opposed to rapid fire. Against small units or scouting forces this tactic would cause as many casualties as possible, as quickly as possible. The soldiers are once again going through their loading process in the same way that they did before. They will then adopt a new firing position, take up the aim and shoot. If you watch carefully, you will see that one of the guns does go off prematurely.
The long loading time meant that the troops were vulnerable whilst they were reloading. They only had their short wakizashi swords to defend themselves or supporting troops. In order to overcome this, firing by ranks or by group meant that whilst one unit fired, the others could reload. The gun corps has slowed this process down and spaced the soldiers out widely so that you can get a view of each gunner as they work under the control of the Taikyo. This small unit of infantry has been split into three groups of three. The rank at the front fires, the second rank is ready to fire and will take their position, and the rank at the rear have finished their firing and are reloading the weapons. A lot of practice is needed in order to get a good sequence going because you want to make sure there is a constant stream of fire. So all of the soldiers need to know what they're doing and not only that, but what also their colleagues are doing. These samurai gunners, with their larger caliber guns and heavier armor, would often seek out their own targets without the supervision of a gun captain. As you can see, they fire independently, just as they find a target. They only carry small strips of match cord that are disposed after each round. Once a samurai had expended all of their ammunition, they would not want to be carrying a length of hinawa, which is the match cord, with them as they take up their swords and close down the enemy. These long guns required a crew of two to fire. Each samurai is assisted by an ashigaru to reload the weapons whilst they survey the battlefield. When used in a castle or defensive position, a gun like this could easily harass advancing soldiers before they came into range of the main force. A bit like a modern day sniper, the harassing fire could seriously affect the morale and the effectiveness of an attacking force. Okay. 
There are, of course, larger caliber guns still, which could only be handled by the most competent and experienced gunners. Fired into troop formations or against cavalry, an Ozutsu was likely to cause severe casualties with a single shot. It's basically a small cannon, and it was only carried by the samurai. They could use these guns to shoot into problem formations or through cover in order to gain a tactical advantage. The display closes with a full regiment of gunners in action at Matsumoto Castle. Hey! 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 